Incredibly important update for parents, students, and teachers alike under the Limestone District School Board. If you've been wondering, what's the plan? The woman with the plan joins us this morning. She's basically the CEO, Chief Education Officer for the Limestone District School Board, our Director of Education. Welcome, Deborah Rantz. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> so there's lots of parents that are going to be hanging on your every word this morning. <laughs> And I really believe that you're about to bring a lot of comfort and relief to a lot of people because the official word is no one expects parents to suddenly become professional teachers. Is that right? Absolutely, Leanne. Uh, we want our parents to, to know that learning is always a priority for our students. However, we recognize that this is a stressful time for them and for their children. The personal and mental well-being of our students remains our top priority, and the best thing that our parents and family members can do at this time is maintain communication with their kids, be patient, understanding, try and focus on a, a regular, uh, relaxed routine, don't get too scheduled, and take advantage of the new opportunities that they have. Let's look for the positives here. Find time to connect with your child during the day. Watch for those natural moments when you can just be together and follow your child's lead. So providing uh, your kids with reassurance and calm during this time will prepare their minds and bodies to engage in learning when the time is right. I think in a lot of cases, it's the kids that are trying to help their parents cope with the whole thing. I'm seeing the, the pictures online of kids in, in kindergarten that have signs up on their door saying, don't come in here, I'm in a meeting. Oh my goodness. <laughs> You know what I think that means, Leanne? I think that the, that the students are really ready to get back to learning. They miss their teachers. I'm very proud of our teachers and finding unique ways to connect with each of their kids. They've been reaching out to families to call them to say, what will work for you? What's your access to to technology? Do you, do you require print packages? It's very, very flexible. You know, the, the bad news is that there's no manual for this, and the good news is there's no manual for this. Nice. So this is creative and authentic learning at its best, and it's, uh, I'd ask parents to please not expect that this is perfect because it's not expected to be perfect. Neither are they expected to be perfect, and sometimes playing games counts. You know what, that's a great point because the teachers, obviously we have students from kindergarten up to grade 12 learning right now and it's going to look really different for each, for each student, but look at the opportunities. We are in spring. It's a reawakening of the earth. Think of the opportunities to play in the garden and rejoice in the growth and inside. Think of baking, cooking, the measurement that goes into that, the singing, the playing of music, the movement, even outside playing in the mud for younger kids. When I think of older kids, Real-life relevant learning opportunities are really important to us. Think about the activities for language, for English, for math, for history, previous pandemics, for example, sociology, um, anthropology, the real relevant questions and conversations that you could have with your children about these ethical and political conversations is really quite astounding. More to come in the next 10 minutes with Deborah Rantz, Director of Education, Limestone District School Board. The difference between e-learning and emergency remote learning coming up. Deborah Rantz, Director of Education, Limestone District School Board. And Deborah, can you tell us the difference between e-learning and emergency remote learning? Yes. E-learning is absolutely something that we engage in, and we always engage in um, online learning with our, with our students. You know, some people are calling this a continuity of learning plan. Uh, I prefer to call it emergency remote learning. This is not something we prepared for. Our teachers are required to take what they planned for the school year three-quarters in and pivot and move to something else that's very experimental, something that's very um, fluid, and it's not necessarily e-learning, it's not necessarily online, but it's blended. They could be using virtual learning programs like platforms like desire to learn or Google, but there's also all sorts of activities. So this is not e-learning, this is a blended approach, and it's meant to be the most flexible it can be for our parents. What message do you have for students who might be having anxiety over how this is going to affect their future? Right. Well, we, uh, we have communicated with our families. If students, if we have graduating students, well, I know the ministry has been working closely with the colleges and universities to be flexible about timelines, to be flexible about the marks that we have to give them. We all want our children to succeed. So uh, I've continued to send that message to our students. Don't worry. We expect that all of our children will pass. All of our children will be promoted to the next grade, and all of our students who are graduating will do so. So this is, again, this 
Mrs. Cross Minister. We've got uh, colleges and universities and education all working to make sure that we're all successful. So I would ask that our students just think positive, just engage in their learning. Uh, we're here to support their social and emotional learning as well, and they do not need to worry about that. And so parents who are having a little anxiety over this still, and they still want a, a portal, where can they go for help? So we have communicated with all of our families. We have a Learn at Home resource from our ministry. We also have a Limestone Suite resources that they can use. And we also have provided them with mental health support so that they can access the, the help they need for their own mental health as well as their children. So we're resource rich and our principals are in contact with their families regularly. Again, we do not expect this to be perfect. We just know that parents need to be a little bit flexible and, and enjoy the creative uh, environment that we're in. They need to cut themselves some slack. Take a deep breath. You didn't just land a second full-time job. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. We're the professionals and they're the parents and we're all in this together.